Today, Lviv is one of the main culture centres of Ukraine, and it's a historic city that survived occupation by both the Soviets and the Germans during the Second World War. Today, over 700,000 people lived there, but during World War II, it was a scene for some of the worst anti-Semitic attacks upon Jews during June and July 1941. It's estimated that thousands were killed in the Lviv pogroms, and many were rounded up and were executed by the Einsatzgruppen, the German death squads, who were responsible for the deaths of millions. But also inside of the city, there were large-scale beatings and acts of violence, much abuse and also looting and robbery. The city, once it fell under occupation, changed heavily. But what is the story of this? Join us today as we look at the horrific torture of the civilians of Lviv. And remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Before the Second World War, Lviv was multicultural and had a population of around half of what it has today. Inside the city were around 32% of people who were Jewish and over 50% ethnic Polish people. But shortly after the signing of the German-Soviet Frontier Treaty, the Germans in the Soviet Union assigned 200,000 square kilometres of Polish territory, lived in by over 13 million people, to the Soviet Union. Lviv was then annexed into the Soviet Union, and whilst the Soviets occupied the land, there were large-scale prisoner executions. Many Polish people were being rounded up, and were being placed inside of Soviet secret police, NKVD prisons, and were then executed in massacres. Some prisoners were locked in basements and then these prisons were set on fire and were torched. But following Operation Barbarossa and the speed that the Germans were advancing, Stalin gave instruction for these executions of prisoners to take place and it's estimated that tens of thousands were killed inside of the prisons. But before the German invasion, there had been collaboration from Ukrainian nationalists and a group known as the OUN. These had been working with the Germans the Lviv group was led by a far-right leader named Shepan Bandera. Along with other far-right leaders, they perpetuated the anti-Semitic ideas that the Nazis had, but when the Germans attacked the Soviet Union and launched Operation Barbarossa, there were around 160,000 Jews living inside of Lviv. Many refugees had came to the city from German-occupied Poland. The OUN had anticipated that Russians, Polish people and Jews would be destroyed in battles around Lviv, and they distributed many leaflets during the beginning of the German invasion. Some of these instructed German soldiers that their fight was not yet done, as the fight was now to destroy the Jews, who they believed were the enemy. But in the morning of the 30th of June 1941, the city of Lviv became occupied by the German military. On the very same day, Jews were being forced to remove the dead bodies of the NKVD's victims, who had been slaughtered in the prisons, and many were forced to clean up the city following the fighting. But many German soldiers, and it's believed the civilians of Lviv, then began to take their anger out on Jewish people, who they believed were collaborating with the Soviets. Many blamed the Jews for the large-scale prison massacres, and some Jews were abused and violently beaten, and some were even murdered. The OUN formed militia groups, and then, because of this, encouraged violence against the Jews and took part in it. On the 1st of July, a pogrom was launched against them, and they were being taken from their apartments. They were forced to clean the streets on their hands and knees, and partake in other humiliation. Women were stripped naked and were abused and beaten, being kicked and punched. Wide-scale assault was also committed against the women, and Jewish people were being taken to the free prisons, where they were forced to exhume the bodies of the prisoners again, before they were too then executed and shot. But on the 2nd of July 1941, the Einsatzgruppen arrived at Lviv. These were the mobile death squads that carried out large-scale executions of civilian populations. Units from Einsatzgruppe C arrived, and then more Jews were being transported to the prisons, where they were then shot and buried in large trenches. Ukrainians were also helping and collaborating with the SS in this, and the mass killings took place over a number of days. The killings were considered more discreet, as Jews were gathered in a stadium, before they were then placed onto trucks and vehicles, before they were then taken to the execution sites. They would have been forced into trenches, amongst the bodies of the dead, before they were too shot. But then, a second attack and pogrom would take place in Lviv, at the end of July 1941. Throughout the weeks, more people were being killed and slaughtered, 
but the second attack specifically was known as the Petliura Days. These killings were encouraged by the Germans and Ukrainian militants from outside of Lviv, and they joined in the attacks. On the 25th of July, many people began to gather at the police stations, and they then assaulted and beat Jews with clubs, knives, axes, and other sharp-bladed weapons. They went around hunting for their victims, and they then began to loot homes and steal much property. Police arrested Jews in their homes, whilst the civilians were being attacked, in the streets and many of them were beaten to death and were murdered in cold blood. It's believed that in this attack, 2,000 people were killed in three days of bloody anti-Semitic violence. There have been conflicting reports about the true number of victims, but it's believed in the first pogrom, around 5,000 were killed, along with another 3,000 who were shot by the Einsatzgruppen. In the second pogrom, more than 1,000 were killed, and more than 2,000 were then killed yet again, by the German death squads. The Lviv ghetto was then established in November 1941 and around 120,000 Jews were held there. The majority of these were later transported to Belzec extermination camp where they were killed inside of the gas chambers as soon as they did arrive there and many were killed by the harsh conditions and disease and executions that also took place within the ghetto. It's believed that only 1% of the Jews of Lviv survived the occupation and the war, as the evil actions inside of the city and the deportations took their lives. Families were shattered and broken up, but the violence in the summer months of 1941 inside of the Ukrainian city today was untold and harrowing. But inside of Lviv, it was completely decimated by not just the Nazis, but also by the Soviets. The local prison population was executed en masse on the orders of Joseph Stalin, but then as the Germans approached, the victims became the Jewish civilians who were living there. The Einsatzgruppen would take the lives of millions during World War II in mass executions and mass shootings, and inside of the city there was a horrific scene of barbarism exhibited by the Germans, Soviets, and also by those who collaborated with them. What happened in Lviv was some of the most disgusting and despicable crimes of the Second World War, and today many of them are not well known and remain untold. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.